This is going to be amazing. Very keen. Very, very keen. All right. What's next, Elliot? Our next topic that we're going to be diving into is actually the fresh birthday story. Oh, Very okay. exciting stuff. This is what the people have been waiting for. This is what you've been waiting for. This was an absolutely hectic crazy, night. Crazy. Absolutely Friday crazy. I'm gonna, we're we're, we're going to be a little bit vague on certain parts of it because it is literally a police matter now and we don't <laughs> want to... Uh, really, you know, go into any details that could cause any problems that... I'm anyway. not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because it's actually just truly ridiculous it's, it's that this even happened. It's truly insane that this happened. And so- literally, like, just to give some context, because I'd had such a hectic week and was moving and that sort of thing, 5.30pm on Friday, I was like, you know what? I might stay home. I might order a pizza tonight and, like, chill out and, like, unwind from the week. And then I was like, it's Fresh's birthday. Everyone's going out to dinner. And, and Ilsa's birthday at the stroke of midnight. Yes, I'll go to dinner And I was actually considering driving. That's how much of a tame night I wanted. And let me tell you, it ended with flashing lights at three o'clock in the morning. So it didn't end up that way. So to set the scene, uh, we've been uh, telling Lockie to come down to town for a few weeks now. And uh, eventually, obviously this is the weekend, uh, Land and Skin was launching. No one was that busy. And we're like, okay, this one works. Like, let's do it. Lockie'd flown down. We'd booked a lovely dinner at a restaurant, gone out, had dinner, gone for drinks at the next place. The group was so big. It was so hard to get in, in anywhere on a Friday night. But um, we It was had, like 12 to 15 of yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Had drinks at another place. It's probably 11 o'clock, about 11.45. That place shuts. Like, okay, got to move on. So we go to a bowling alley. I will not name the bowling alley, but no. we, we decided to go to a bowling alley that was just nearby. And we're like, oh, that sounds great. And get some drinks from the bar. We can get a couple of bowling lanes and just go bowling. Sounds yeah. great. Our group was maybe 11, 12 people probably at this point. When we get to the bowling alley, they only have one lane available. Sucks, but we're like, you know what? We'll all team up, play. <laughs> You're really wondering right now how this story about a lovely evening of bowling turns into flashing lights. But trust me, it really does get there. And also, I really do want to point out, everyone was pretty damn sober. I I was shockingly sober. I think there were a couple of people that rocked up later in our group who were a, a bit more drunk, but they weren't even really yeah. involved in the story because we'd just been trying to find a bar for so long that by the time we found a bar, everyone was like, okay, cool. I can go to sleep now. Um, but anyway, got this lane. And then uh, as we're kind of like all getting drinks at the bar, waiting for it to get set up, we've got one friend who is a bit of a jokester and um, he sees the lane next to us, has got uh, someone sitting on the couch, um, just kind of waiting and notices they're not actually bowling. So he goes up, he's like, oh, can I have a bowl while we wait for our lane? And um, the girl sitting down is like, yeah, absolutely. Go for it, like grab it. Um, So he picks up the bowling ball. All of a sudden, this guy comes around the corner and is like, what the F do you think you're doing? Put that down. Like the language and the aggression was incredible, insane. Nick immediately puts the ball down. He's like, I'm sorry. I." She said it was okay and goes to sit down on the couch because their bowling alley, we basically have like a shared couch area. He sits down on the couch. The guy's like, and while you're at it, you can get the F off that couch and get out of here. Mm. And, and then it was like, very aggressive. It was immediate aggression, um, like crazy aggression. This guy had crazy in his eyes. Anyway, then everyone's like, okay, cool. We're just waiting for our lane to get set up properly. So we're all still at the bar, like, grabbing drinks and stuff. This guy marches over to the bar, like pulls Nick up. I didn't hear what got said at that point, but effectively from what I heard later, he threatened to kill him unless he got out of there. Uh, and then uh, Nick like, literally- bro, just trying to have a bowl on Nick, a Friday night. Once again, our group moved away and was like, you need to calm down, dude. But anyway, de-escalated it. This guy went back, finished their bowling. As at this point, we've now got our lane. Uh, everyone's sitting on the couches around our lane and also their lane. They've finished up their game at this point. They're grabbing their bags. They're going, the aggressive guy and the girl he was with. Um, Fresh is just sitting on the couch yeah, doing what Fresh does, which is looking like a stunned goldfish with a smile on his face, just looking around, just enjoying life. Yeah, Literally, he's like a harmless little puppy dog just sitting he on a couch, is, is a puppy sipping dog. on his little straw drink. Anyway, at this point, the guy... As he's walking past the couch to go out, just winks it fresh for no reason. Really, really weird. 
and Fresh, <laughs> who has missed, I'm pretty sure, everything that's gone on to this point, literally, uh, literally just like, literally just looks up and just like gives him a little wave, like just waves at him. <laughs> and um, and it's like, it's like, yeah, hey, dude. I think like, at this point, Fresh actually thought the guy was perhaps a viewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. Fresh thought that the guy maybe knew who he was because this yeah. guy was maybe like 30. Um, it like just gives him a little wave. The guy walks up to Fresh, leans in like nose to nose distance, like really in his face, puts a hand on each cheek and then just starts slapping back and forward on each cheek on Fresh. And at this point, everyone at the couch is like, you need, like literally pushes him away from Fresh because you don't, like that's literally assault, just walking yeah. up to someone and slapping him in the face. Pushes him away from Fresh, but like, doesn't hit him or do anything aggressive like that. No. Push him away. It's like, it was literally just such a shock. It was like, it's fresh. It's you know, fresh. like, it, what is this he's, kid couldn't have fly. The most docile person I've ever met. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. And was like, you need to get away from him um, and move him away. And at this point, like, we've, like, we've, we've, like, we were shouting at him, like, you need to go. Cause, yeah. like, before, yeah, anyway. So, so at that, that point, security's come over and they've grabbed the guy. And we've been like, you, and we're literally like, he needs to get out of here. He just slapped our friend in the face repeatedly. Like, what mm. are you doing? This isn't okay. He's already like tried to cause something earlier. Yeah. Can he go? And then at this point, uh, security is like holding him there. We're like, he needs to go now. And then this guy has got a glass in his hand and all of a sudden just piffs it, hits Lannan straight in the forehead. And yeah, like in the hairline. In the here. head. The glass also uh, like ricochets. ricochets off and cuts maybe three or four other people around us, including Ilsa. And all of a sudden I turn and Lannan has, because head wounds are crazy. Yeah. Blood coming all down the side yeah. of his face. Like all down the side of his, there was so much blood. It was insane. Yeah. At this point, security is like, oh, okay. Now, yep, yeah, they take him out. Yeah. But also I see they're more like, just escorting him out, like a hand on his back, like moving him in that yeah. direction. I was like, do you see what he just did? He and, and the manager's gone with them and the manager's trying to tell our group to sit down. At this point, I've realized that I, I, I mean, I was effectively dead sober at this point and I could tell there were a lot of people who were, obviously they've just watched one of their friends get yeah. hit and another one get glassed in the face, are very agitated and probably need to like, you know, and you know, kind yeah. of, they're probably not the most level head for dealing with this situation. It was just shock though. It was it happened yeah, so quick. Shock. Happened so like within shock. the period of like this whole thing happened within yeah. two minutes. To, and you watch anyone, you watch any of your friends yeah. suddenly bleeding out of your head, you're going to get agitated. So I was like pushing everyone back. I was like, everyone needs to go sit down. I walked up with the manager and I was like, we're calling the police. He's just glassed our friend in the head, slapped the other one and he's bleeding everywhere. Yeah. Like you cannot let him go. Cause they're like taking him to the exit. And yeah. she was like, she's like, this is my job. I'm handling it. And I was like, I was like, no, 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 no. Like you can't let him go. She's like, no, we're not, but you need to like go down. And I was like, I was like, okay, I'm just going to stand here. I just want to make sure this guy doesn't leave. Yeah. Cause he's committed a crime. Yeah. Um, and then uh, anyway, as I'm, I'm waiting there talking to someone else who's come up, he's like, Hey man, I saw the whole thing. Don't worry. Like we're, we know what we saw what happened. And I was like, cheers, man. Appreciate it. Um, cops should be here 